Hi, this is Drew Loker, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to get started with your Google Drawing Vector Graphic. So you'll want to go to your Google Classroom, find the assignment by clicking on Classwork, then click on View More, and you will find it the fourth assignment down, Drawing Vector-Based Variation. You can watch a video that was produced and found on YouTube about Google Drawing Activity. You can watch it for some general ideas. I'm also going to show you some ideas in this video. So between the two, hopefully you will uh, be able to work on the assignment. So click on View Assignment. It looks a little different from me, so I won't be able to show you this, but click on View Assignment and then click on Create and create a Google Drawing. What that looks like is, and I'll show you from a different account or for a different assignment, which I'm a class member of, you'll click on the assignment, click on View Assignment, and then click on Create, and you'll see the icon for Drawings. So once you've done that, you'll go ahead and click on the assignment or on the, uh, the document. When you click on the assignment uh, that is created, it'll take you to the new tab. And you can see that I've got a completed piece of work in place right now, including dragging in the painting assignment, which I exported as a JPEG and showed in another video. And you can do the same thing as well. You can either have it open in the program and off to the side, or you can actually bring it into the assignment, and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to start from scratch. I'm just going to do a control A and then delete. And so this is very similar to what you'll see when you first open up the document. So I'm going to restore down and move this window over so that I can see the documents that I've created. And you'll find yours underneath your L drive if you put it in the right place. And I'm going to go to where I think the drawing should be. By clicking on the File Explorer icon, it looks like a little folder. And I'm going to click on Documents, which is where mine has stored. Yours should be on the uh, in the L drive. So with the JPEG visible, there's my JPG that tells me it's a JPEG, but it's actually a JPEG, so it should be a file type JPEG, not a PDN. And I'm just going to click on that and drag it and drop it, just like you did with the autobiography or maybe even the poster assignment when you moved an image over. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the Restore Up. And as it is right now, my painting is filling the entire page. And you got a couple of different options right here. You could possibly make it fill the whole page, stretch it out, and click on Format Options and change the adjustments and the transparency and make it very faint so you can see what you're trying to accomplish. But I don't think I really like that. That is one option though. I'm going to resize it down and just put it over here on the side so I can see what I'm doing. Now technically you can do whatever you want to for the painting or the drawing rather. The painting as a variation as a vector graphic is just an idea so you don't have to do another rough draft. So if you'd like to deviate from that and do something completely different, that's completely up to you. But you only have a couple of days on this, and the simplest thing to do is to open up your painting and try to do the same thing that you did as a painting as a vector drawing. Remember, our goal with the vector drawing is to simulate what would be uh, necessary to create a cartoon or an animation, which is what we're going to do in the next assignment. So once we have our uh, canvas ready to go and we're ready to start working, the main things that you want to focus on are the shapes as well as the line and the curves and the polylines. And these allow you to come up with the various shapes. Sometimes we need to do a combination of shapes or a composite shape. Like when you saw the uh, initial image that I had on the screen, the tree with the leaves was multiple layers of the leaves. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on insert and you can either get to it from the insert menu or you can actually click on the icon that says insert shapes and 
Uh, based on the video that I have on the assignment, it shows a 3D graphic, which you can certainly experiment with, and I would highly encourage you to do so. But that is not necessary. So when you first draw out your graphic, unlike in painting, once you clicked off of it, you could not modify that graphic very easily without using a paint bucket. In this case, because it's a vector graphic, I can resize it and recolor it at any given time. Now across the top, there are four different types of colorings, and hopefully you learned in the poster one assignment that there is text color and highlight color, as well as fill color and line color. With this assignment, we focus more on the fill color and the line color and the line width. So I'm going to take the uh, fill color and make it a different color completely, and I'll choose something along the line of a, a brick color and or maybe a paneling or siding and then I'm going to change the line color black is fine for this right here I might even make it a little bit thicker and it just makes it pop a little bit when you click off of it we're now off that object but I can click back on that object and move it around again even though I've select or deselected it I can still click on it again and change it so that is dramatically different than in the painting program and as we progress with this, we'll go back and add a roof to it. And you'll see very quickly why this is a pretty easy assignment to complete, but it will let us move into the next assignment. And one of the keys that you want to learn here is the error keys. That's your nudge key. We've learned it before in other assignments, including the autobiography and the poster one. The error key allows you to move up and down, left and right. And the shift error key lets you move just one single pixel, whereas without the shift, the arrow key moves you five pixels, so you'll want to make sure you master the left hand on the shift key to move up and down right there. All right, and I can see right there I need to move over just a little tiny bit. All right, so we're going to choose a different, and you can also do gradients, and we're going to choose a different uh, gradient. And the gradient allows you to have a texture of sorts. And thanks to a student pointing out today, Joseph pointed out that you can click on custom and I had not done that before so nice uh, learning by me today to click on the custom and that allows you to go in there and change the gradient and you can click on add and that point that you put allows you to change the color you can change that color to a different transition and you can add another point and you can change the different colors and different transitions along the way right there And you can also change the angle on whether it's linear or radial and we'll go ahead and click OK and you can play around with that. It just makes it look a little different than just a straight flat object. It's still not centered right there. Okay, there we go. All right, so as we continue to develop this, there are other shapes that you might want, like maybe you want um, some clouds. And I do want to teach you this one simple concept of copying and pasting. We'll change that to a little bit more of a cloud color, maybe even a gradient. So when we click on it the first time, we're going to do a Control C and then Control V. And on this program, it doesn't matter if it's still selected. It'll let you go ahead and make a duplicate of it. Some programs you have to click off. So you'd have to click, make your copy, Control C, click off and then can do a control V. This program is pretty forgiving in just doing a control uh, V on top of an already selected object, but be careful with that because some programs do not like that. So then we'll use my air keys to nudge it up and over, maybe even make it a little bit darker or lighter so it simulates that that cloud is maybe in a different position as in real life. And another thing that you can learn is the keyboard command control D. In this program, Control D is duplicate some programs that is bookmark. So in uh, Chrome, normally Control D makes a new bookmark. But when you're in drawing mode, it uh, interprets it and intercepts it and makes it a duplicate. So I get two of them. And that's just a quicker way of doing the Control C, Control V. I can just do a Control D. And that uh, is the same thing as copying and pasting. And you'll even find some sun shapes. Again, we're just trying to learn and practice with this program. There's my sun. I can put a sun up there. And we'll make it yellow, a nice yellow sunburst. And you'll notice that the sun is in front of the clouds. To move that backward, we click it, right-click it, 
and go to order and I'm going to send it back. You really want to learn this keyboard shortcut right here. Control air key down or control air key up. Right now control air key up is grayed out because it would be to send it uh, forward or backward and already it's on top so I can't send it forward. So we're going to send it backward and then I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut from here. So now I'm going to go control down and what it's going to do is move it below those cloud layers. So up or down between uh, the layers and allows me to move it. You can move it off screen partially, unlike the painting program, which would destroy it. You can move it off the page. Now, it looks like it's still on there, and it also looks like I have a drawing over there. But when you go to File, Print, Preview, or you go to Export This, when you do that, you'll see that anything off the page does not actually show up. So you can go off the page if you like. And since we only export this as JPEGs or turn it in as is, um, it isn't necessary, necessarily to move that off the page. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, go ahead and put a background. I'm going to take a shape and I'm going to draw it out for the whole entire shape. I can click on it. There we go. And I'm going to click and drag it, drag it out. And then I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut to go control down to move it down, back down below the layers. And then while it's selected, I'm going to choose a different color. And that looks a little bit better right there, a little bit more realistic. So we'll continue to play with this and come up with our final work. And then when you're done, uh, there's not a lot to scrutinize over this as far as getting approved to turn in. Once it looks fairly complete and you're pleased with it, uh, go ahead and go back to the assignment page and click turn in and you can be done with it. Uh, if you do finish very quickly, I will expect you to do an extra one uh, with the available time or you may spend your time either painting or typing or one of the other enrichment activities. Hope this helps and enjoy the painting module. Or oh, I'm sorry, the drawing module. Sorry about that. Hopefully you enjoyed the painting module as well.